and still can't figure out how uh, when I go to Tri-Cities Grace Quest, the website, it wanted to acknowledge my camera, so I'm recording it. Hopefully, I can upload it later. So, thank uh, you guys for being here. Good to see everybody. Um, glad to see my youngins here. I haven't seen them in a while. Uh, I saw him last week, but um, good to have both of them here. Anybody have any prayer requests they want to make mention this morning? Just remember how long he gets in for that sort of Yeah, thing. he goes in for ear tubes in his ears tomorrow. Uh, also, uh, remember Patsy, she seems to yeah. be having some issues. So I'm kind of concerned that she might be on the verge of having a stroke. Uh, uh, she was having some uh, sensation issues and vertigo and things like that. So remember her. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, well. Glenn, I'm glad you showed up. You, you can lead us in prayer this morning, brother. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for all your blessings and thank you for the Bible class that you've given us, the teachers, and just the people of the uh, hotel here that have provided for us for the last 20 years. We lift up these requests, those who have spoken. You can meet the needs and open our ears, let us hear the words that you give us and understand those in your name. Amen. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. And I was checking on the site there, and they're, they're having a Bible class right now down there in Gastonia, uh, which is good. Uh, what I want to talk about today is the Word. Um, you know... And I'm I'm guilty of this too. I, sometimes I'll uh, I'll be listening to the Bible on my little app, phone app, which is really amazing, really, because I remember I bought that Alexander Scorby's cassette tape series of the New Testament. The whole Bible was going to be like seventy or eighty bucks, and I got the New Testament. For, I guess it was like thirty bucks or something back in the day, and I used to would sit and listen to that. But now. You have access to it on your phone. It's amazing. Or you, uh, you can just listen to the Bible read to you by some guy with great pronunciation. Um, but my point in all of that is, uh, you know, in that book that's sitting right there on that table back there is the answer for every problem in your life. It, it's... Uh, it's got wisdom in it. It's got uh, instruction on how to guide your life. If you're having things going on in your life that you don't have a, quite an answer for, it'll give you uh, information on how to get peace, how to be uh, the outlook on life, and it's all right there. God gave it to us for that purpose. And uh, uh, it, it's literally, you know, I guess it would be amazing if, if I told you that, God, literally, you audibly could hear God speak. If you could literally hear him speak to you, that would be pretty amazing. People would be, oh my God, we'd be having big carnival groups together, and people would be, this is amazing. Well, we have it. It's in our house. Most of the time it just sits, you know, sits on the desk or sits on a shelf. And uh, uh, so I want to kind of look at the Word today and maybe just like I do, to get the encouragement of, of what we have in that book. And he says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, 
and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man, no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with his vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. It is Christ. He is the Word. He was behind the Word. He is the spoken Word. He is the written Word. Let's go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse 63. Um, everything that you see around you today, everything that's in the universe was spoken by Jesus Christ. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Uh, just, just on that alone, the words that he spoke to the Apostle Paul uh, there on that road to Damascus on salvation. Those words, literally, if you hear them, the gospel of Christ, if you hear that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again, and that completed your salvation, hearing those words and placing faith in those words and calling upon the Lord gives eternal life. I mean, it, that's amazing. You know, it really is an amazing thing that one person can be walking along supposedly uh, on their way to hell, hear those words, believe and call upon the Lord and have eternal life. It's amazing. And that's what he's saying here. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Zechariah 4, 6. Uh, now, there was a period in history known as the Crusades. It's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a disturbing time because people were basically sit down in a chair. They were uh, persecuted. They were put in prison and basically tried to force these people to convert. Uh, there was also the Spanish Inquisition. And most of this was done by the Catholic Church or the remnant of the, of the Protestant Catholic Church. And but you know there's been wars, well, uh, most of the wars that's been fought has been over religion, a religious thing, or religious thing, and it's all been over that book. Now, God didn't put the book here to cause wars. Wars been caused by men, but that book is so powerful. It's literally shaped our human history. Uh, it's shaped our, our minds. It's shaped our... Uh, our societies. Zechariah 4 6. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, great crying grace and grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know the Lord of hosts has sent me. Uh, this is a great passage right here. Zerubbabel was charged by the king, I believe it was the king of Persia, they were going to go back into their promised land. They'd been in captivity through Babylon, through uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Then they, Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was conquered by the Persians, and then the Persians let them go back into their land. And Zerubbabel was chosen by the, by the king to build, rebuild the temple. And uh, in, in the process of doing this, uh, God said, uh, sent a prophet to Zerubbabel saying uh, that this task that he was going to accomplish, and this was also typical of our own life, uh, anything in our life, it's not by our own might, it's not by our own power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And that's pretty amazing. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. 
and verse 32. Luke 4, 32. Now this is the Lord going around and He's preaching. And it's, it's different than what, the, uh, what those people had been listening to. Uh, you know, uh, just like I've been in the Baptist church all those years, and I've never heard the, the doctrine that we, you know, we preach here. Uh, it's been around, but I hadn't heard it. So I would have thought, hey, what is this new, this new doctrine? You know, and it was exciting to me. Well, these people had been listening, going to sit in the synagogues for years, listening to the law. Uh, and uh, and then all of a sudden Jesus comes along and notice what it says. They were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power. And in the, in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, With what word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, that they came out. And, of course, this was still going on before, but these Pharisees had no power to cast out these. Uh, these people would just wander about. There was a man that they, I always loved this story, but there was a man that, that wandered in this one town who wandered in the graveyards all the time. And he was cut up. He was dirty. Uh, he had chains. Or, were, have you ever seen a dog that they've chained up and he's running loose but half the chain's hanging loose? Well, that's the way this man was. He had chains on him where they tried to chain him down and he broke the chains because he had, well, the, remember Legion, the, the amount of devils, that he had a lot of devils in this guy, right? And uh, he come across the Lord and the Lord cast them all out. And when they came over, Jesus was, or this guy was sitting at Jesus' feet. He, he looked calm. He was at peace. Uh, but no one had been able to, to do this type of stuff. And so they had actually met the Lord. He was the one. He was the Word. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. Um, again, I'm trying to get you to get focused on the fact that that book... That, that so many people know when they say, well, it's the Bible or it's God's Word, that book that sits on the shelf, it was spoken by the one that created heaven and earth. He is the one that literally shaped our universe. And the same power that was put into creating the universe is in the words in that book. It's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. Speaking about Jesus, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. This, this whole universe is being held together right now by the word of God. It's... He spoke it, and it's being contained, and everything's being consisted together by Him. When He had purged, uh, when He had Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of Majesty on high. Colossians 1.15. This shouldn't be too big today. I've got about three pages, so we'll go through this pretty quickly today. Colossians 1.15. <clears throat> but you notice all of this here that we've looked at so far is the focus on Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Now, it's interesting. We know Him as Jesus Christ because the Word refers to Him or the Bible refers to Him as Jesus Christ. But even before there was the written Word, 
He was known in the universe, the, the angels, as the Word, the Word of God. He spoke it. That's how they knew Him. Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God? And what he means by that, before Christ came into Mary, that became uh, through the Virgin Mary and became flesh, he was the express image of God. He was the invisible God until he took on human form. And he says the firstborn of every creature, that means when he was resurrected, he was the first one to be born from the dead. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, invisible and uh, visible and invisible. That would include the angels. Uh, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. That word consist means it's held all together by him. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, it, that in all things he might have the preeminence. One day he will be all things in heaven, visible and invisible, and that we would be, they would be visible to us at that time. All things will bow before him and call him King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 22. Proverbs 8, 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills were, was I brought forth. While as yet there had not been made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he stretched the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth. My delights were the sons of men, now, therefore, hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instructions, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. What he's talking about there is the Word of God. The Word was there when before he created all of this. Before, it's the wisdom, the, the Bible, the the law refers to itself as the wisdom of God. Uh, Paul talks about the gospel of Christ as being the wisdom of God. All of that was there before he ever created the first thing, before he created the angels, the heavens, all of that. What he's trying to say is that wisdom of God was there and it's now contained in that book back there. It's amazing. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Uh, and I would say, submit to you, that same power that caused all that to happen is contained in the pages of that book. It's, it's really amazing. I, you know, I, I forget sometimes that when you're holding that book, you're holding a, a, the most powerful thing in the universe. Romans 10, 17. Uh, it is powerful in the sense that one person can be on, on their way to death the second death, eternal separation from God, and can be changed by hearing some words. And the faith and the Spirit of God can uh, make something amazing happen. So then faith cometh by hearing, and then hearing by the Word of God. You know the things in that book, you can't have any faith until you hear it. Uh, until you someone puts it forth to you so you can understand it. Uh, but also reading it and trying to understand that book 
you have until that goes on, you you have no faith. You can't believe. You couldn't believe that uh, Christ died for all men until you hear it and somebody explains it to you. Um, so back to uh, Proverbs eight thirty five. Mm -hmm. Paul, uh, not Paul, but uh, David is writing this. Whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All that he hath me love to death. Every man, every woman that hates that book, when someone's trying to show them the wisdom, and the, the wisdom today would be the gospel of Christ, out of that book, and they say, eh, I don't want to hear that. Basically, it's basically saying they're sinning against their own self. That that book is your way to get eternal life. That book is your way to find favor with God. Uh, now, let's go uh, quickly here. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. This is pretty a uh, pretty interesting statement. And you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, I was over uh, in my delivery area, and I delivered a case of King James Version Bibles. And uh, this guy was with, uh, what is the ones that lit Gideon's, the Gideon's group. And I told him, I says, that's a rare thing right there. I says, you don't see that, because I went to a couple places here in town to buy, I was trying to get a giant print, KJB Bible. And man, there's the Spanish versions, the ESV, the ESRV, all of those are all up there. Now there was a, a two or three uh, KJV versions there, but they're all pushed to the back. It's rare. Eventually there will probably a day where the KJV will be so minuscule that you can't even hardly find it or you have to order it to get and it's about to get to that point. Uh, but what my point in all of that is the system that we have today is trying to push the KJV. The KJV is the Word of God in the English language. You can hold that book in your hand and say, I have the complete soul without error book, God's <laughs> Word in, in your hand. It, that's it. And slowly society is trying to push that out of the way so that you can't get access to it. And this has been going on for thousands of years, folks, that the, the Satan and the world system has been trying to get the Word of God so that you couldn't get access to it. And that's why Paul says this here in 2 Corinthians 13 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. You can try to go against the Word of God, but God's Word is going to be preserved. Uh, in fact, he told me over there, and you know, a lot of people look at a little town uh, over there in the, in the cold fields as those are a bunch of backward people over there. And he said that that's all they want is the KJV. They, there's a few, I've noticed a few in those areas that use a, uh, a, a newer translation, but they still hold to the fact that the KJV is God's Word. And that's, that's to their credit, um, that they're holding to the tradition of the truth. But, you know, you can't, you, you know, I've gone in my life, and I can say this with a fact, when I go against the principles that's laid out in this book, whether it be with finances, when it goes with your marriage, when it goes with relationships, when you go against the doctrine, the wisdom, whatever this book is trying to tell you, finances, for example, if you ignore the wisdom or finances are concerned in this book, you're going to be a mess. We can we can attest to that, can't we? Have it? If you treat people not according to what this book says, like love your neighbor, uh, be good to people, be compassionate, you don't do those types of things. You just bring problems into your life. So what he's saying is, you can't do anything against this book. You can try, but uh, but if you do things for the truth, it brings it brings joy into into your life. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, 
Let's go now to first or John chapter 1 and verse 1. John chapter 1 and verse 1. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, here's the other thing. <clears throat> The, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Uh, Aramaic is the language. The New Testament was written in Greek. We don't speak Greek. We don't speak Aramaic. Okay, we could have, we, we could have had to try to learn that, but it was translated into English. That's the language that we know and that we speak, and that was the language that developed. Uh, but in heaven... And I don't know this. I, this is just speculation on my part. When I get to heaven, there will be millions of people there that have spoke Spanish, spoke all sorts of different languages throughout the ages, uh, Aramaic or whatever. I don't know if we'll have a special knowledge that we all speak the same language. But what I'm trying to get you to see is the word, whatever the language was, it's forever settled in heaven. It's not changed. This whole book has always been. Uh, we just have it now in, in the English language. Everything in here, when you're dealing with the Lord, when you're standing before the Lord, uh, let's say you're a lost person and you're standing before the Lord at the great white throne judgment, everybody there will be able to know what this book said. And God will be able to say, well, I said that if you would trust my son who died for you and was buried and rose again, you could have eternal life as a free gift. And everybody would be able to say, well, yes, you did say that. Okay. That's whatever the language would be. I don't know. If, again, when I get there, I may only know how to speak English. You know, that, that's going to be an issue at some point, you think? I mean, all the different languages throughout the eight, th thousands of ages uh, or, or years, the ages. I don't know how that's going to work, but we're all going to know that there's going to be a book there because in Revelations chapter 20, it talks about the books that were opened. And when you're judged out of those books, you're going to be judged out of the book and the, and the books being the book of life, is your name written in the book of life? If you've been saved, your name is still there. If you're lost and you show up at the great white throne judgment, your name was written down there, but it's blotted out because you didn't trust the gospel. So there's books that's going to be there. Uh, and the word, the one that spoke everything into existence, will be there all sitting on that throne, passing out judgment based on the book. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And he's talking about Christ. Christ, before he took on human form, was the Word. When God said, I want to create a universe with thousands of planets, the Lord spoke it and it became. When he said, I want to create suns and stars in the world or the universe, he thought it, and the Lord spoke it, and it became all of those things. I want to create angels. Uh, he thought it, and the Lord spoke it. That's what he's trying to say. He was always with the Lord, or with, uh, with God. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was, it, was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything that was made. So here's the interesting thing. While Jesus is walking around in this human form that wasn't very, you couldn't point to Jesus and say, he's the son of God because he looked like normal people. He was still the same one that said, spoke things and it became a reality. They didn't realize it. They, it that still amazes me. You couldn't look at Jesus and say he was God, but he was contained in that form. Um, and he made everything. In him was life. He is the giver of life. He spoke things and it gave life. And the light was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness. 
and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And, that's, and he did. John came. Now, he, he was doing this according to the Old Testament. The Old Testament prophets said that before Messiah would come, there would be one out in the wilderness crying as a prophet saying, He's coming, He's coming. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he would be baptizing. And here he, he was that person. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Every man will have given account to the Lord. I will stand before him as a saved man because I've accepted him as my Savior, as the King of kings, Lord of lords. He died for me. So he won't be able to judge me as a lost person. He will know that I've received him and acknowledge him. Um, now, he is the true light. Notice he says, that was the true light. You know, there's a lot of lights going on in this world that are trying to be or convince you that they are a part of the true light. <clears throat> Hold there. Um, well, no, let's, uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And I really want you to get a handle on this. It took me a long time to get a handle on this. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in this world in the name of religion. And you can do all sorts of things in this world that are good and decent, helping people and all of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But Satan uses things like those types of things to draw people in, to you know, get them off track. Because he doesn't want you to receive the true light. He doesn't want you to, uh, he doesn't want you to be saved. And the thing that, that's really uh, amazing in all of this is that Jesus Christ, the true light, created a whole group of beings called angels that the Bible speaks of. Whenever they appear to human beings, it's like they can't even look at them. They're bright. They are part of the light. Uh, but Satan was one of those angels and he failed. Notice what 2 Corinthians 11, 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into the angel, into an angel of light. He was light, he was a light, uh, it was an angel of light at once. He, he knows how to do that. God hasn't stopped him from having that ability, for, at least for right now. Uh, you know, I've read some of these books about the near-death experiences, people that wake up and they're drawn to the light and all that. <clears throat> and uh, I read a book by a guy who was a, uh, he was a heart surgeon. And he had several incidences throughout his career of people he was doing, you know, heart surgery on or whatever, and the people died on the table. They were eventually resuscitated. But, you know, you're, uh, imagine you're a doctor and you're working on this guy and he's having a heart attack and you're trying to keep him from dying and you go in and you're doing a triple bypass or whatever and the guy dies on the table and they eventually resuscitate him and then when the guy wakes up, he's talking about some light and they're like, what? Uh, what is, what's this guy talking about? You know, and these people, I, I saw a light or, or I saw so-and-so and, -so, and it, they're amazing stories. And he began to study this as a, as a, you know, just as a personal hobby and became a Christian and then began to really look at it in the light of the Word of uh, God and came to the conclusion not everybody that saw a light uh, really could give a good testimony of being saved. And he always comes back to this pa passage here, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, maybe what they saw was the wrong light. Uh, so that's just something to you know think about. <clears throat> let's let's finish up here with. Uh, well, we're still, we're still in John. Let's finish up here in John uh, one ten. He was in the world, 
and the world was made by him. You know, that really amazes me. He made the earth. He created all of humanity. He takes on human form. He's holding the whole universe together and he's walking around and people are, they just treat him like, like nothing. They, they, you know, the ones that did understand that he was Messiah, the anointed one, they, they loved him. They were kneeling at him at, and, and wanted to be around him. But his own creation eventually hung him on a cross, beating almost half to a pulp, and hang him on a cross. And then while he's hanging up there, bleeding out, making fun of him, spitting on him. It, it, it amazes me that that, that's, that shows the humanity. Here's the Son of God, the Creator of all things, hanging on a cross and bleeding out and His creation rejecting him. Notice He says He came to His own, and that's to the Jews, and His own received Him not. But that would also be humanity as well. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. Uh, let me just touch on that for just a moment. You know, when you get saved, when you receive eternal life, you get that, not by any great thing that you've done, not by cause of your birth, but by His power. It is the will of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let's go to John chapter, I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. 1 John 1, 1. <clears throat> and this is uh, John talking about, uh, here's his, uh, 1 John, here is him talking about being around the Lord. That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our, our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled the word of life. They understood. And I think John really had an understanding. This is the creator. This is the Lord of the Old Testament. This is the one that spoke everything into existence. He uh, says we handled the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which the Father was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declared we unto you, that ye may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write unto you, that ye may be, uh, joy may be full. Uh, let's go... Uh, no, well, no, that's fine, that's fine. We'll, we'll just, let me just say this. John saw him in the physical sense. He handled him with his, with his hands. Uh, there was, there's passages there in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said that, you know, there was the beloved apostle that loved the Lord. He was always, you know, with his head laying on his chest and all of that. He understood who he was. He wanted to be near him. Uh, and... It's really amazing that John gives this kind of, when you read these things, he understood this was the Word of God. But uh, Paul saw the Lord as well. He saw the Creator. He saw Him brighter than the noonday sun. He saw Him in His risen, glorified state. And that Word made flesh was now risen and given power and changed, changed form. But he also gave some things to Paul. He spoke to Paul and give him the gospel of Christ, the word that gives you eternal life. And that's what he's talking about. He is eternal life. The Son is life. He is eternal life. He has the power to give it by his words. So I, it's always amazed me. He is the word. He is the spoken word. He spoke the word. And he gives the power to give eternal life. And when you get to the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, if you've rejected the Word, if you've rejected the Bible, if you've rejected everything that God has tried to give you to give you eternal life, you won't really have an excuse. 
And you'll have to face the word that was there. The one that would give you eternal life as a free gift. Uh, and, and so it's a pretty sobering thing. But I really wanted to get across that that book that's back there that you hold in your hands has the power of eternal life. It's the, got the power to change life. It's the power uh, that the same power that created the heavens and the earth is in that book. So I thank you guys for coming out today and I uh, appreciate you for being here. It's hard to explain the universality of the word. Yeah, it is, for sure.